Al Allah has officially been named as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the GCC's first ever international dark sky park and a major boost to the Royal Commission for Al Allah's ambitions to develop stargazing, astro tourism, as well as space science and discovery in Northwest Arabia. This is according to a press release. Dark Sky International, the global body committed to tackling light pollution in urban and rural areas, awarded the Dark Sky Park accreditation across two locations in Al Ala County, Al Ala Manara and Al Garamil Nature Reserve. Sorry about the pronunciation. Al Ala's Dark Sky Park status was confirmed after several rounds of intensive reviews, with officials carefully evaluating the Royal Commission for Al Ala's long term plans and how they impact the natural and cultural landscape of Al Ala. Dark Dark Sky Parks provide significant scientific, educational, cultural, and natural value to a destination and will greatly uplift Al Ula's growth as a prime location for stargazing tours and research. This aligns with the development of Al Ula Manara as a pioneering destination for celestial discoveries and astro tourism. Yeah, I mean, this is sick, right? It's like you, some of the, one of the reasons to go to Saudi Arabia is if you get outside of the cities, the stargazing is out of this world. And you can see photos of it, like really talented photographers will take unbelievable pictures. But I mean, this is a reason to visit this area specifically in Saudi Arabia because you will be going and seeing the sky as, you know, as perfectly as it is viewable when you are far away from cities with no light pollution. I, I kind of want to go and see this. I mean, this looks awesome. And, you know, you have a lot of, yeah. you know, I don't know. I just feel like it's cool for them to get this. Yeah, it is. So I've been, and I've been stargazing in Al Ula, and it was phenomenal. And so I grew up camping, I think I've mentioned this before, in the Pacific Northwest. So we normally go kind of up into the mountains where there is very, very little to no light pollution at night. And for me, that experience was always one of the defining parts of my childhood is just really like laying down on like the beach near the little like lake where we would go camping and watching the stars at night with my siblings and my dad. And it was just like the most amazing thing. And so I, I, I missed that in Saudi because I rarely went out to the desert. Like my, my family members would, but I rarely went with them. And so I'm excited because this it is a transformational experience now, plus the fact that like Saudis are going to space anyway, it's really important for them to be in touch with what's going on up in the sky. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's really breathtaking. Yeah. Stargazing is awesome. I'm trying to get my children like kind of into it now. Like they're, they're old enough. And unfortunately it is after their bedtime where the best stargazing yeah. is here <laughs> in the United States. I'm a little far from DC on the farm, so it's pretty good here, but it's not like the, oh my goodness, like, you know, dark sky certification level. So I, yeah. Well, the thing with the Lola, and so I went up to Northumberland here in the UK and it's supposed to be the most amazing place for stargazing. And you can even see the Northern lights, et cetera, et cetera. You couldn't see anything because of overcast, right? So in Lola, you don't have that. And that's one of the things that I think is really going to make a difference. People can travel and it's a guaranteed uh, view of a beautiful, beautiful, dark, dark sky with all the stars. <laughs> yeah, I think we should get somebody on from Alola to discuss this and the deal and and what is uh, required, like how they provide the certification. Yeah. You know, like how many is it? How many stars you can see, or is it like a kind of a you know flavor judging? <laughs> I think thing? it has to do with how dark it is. I think it has to be about how dark it is and how little like star sorry light pollution there would be, because you can see stars anywhere as long as there's no light, right? And so. I, I believe that's probably what it is. I mean, we went to this really cool like stargazing event in Northumberland and they had individual huge kind of telescopes that you could use to look and they were kind of walking you through what you could see and there was a chart. We saw nothing. <laughs> because of the <laughs> Plus, clouds, yeah. <laughs> because of the clouds. Well, there, because of the clouds and then just to top it off, like there there was a like a the moon was too bright as well. So, so when the cl when the clouds broke, it was the wrong time of year. Anyway, of the month, sorry. But anyway, yeah, there's a lot to stargazing. My dad was really into stars and planets when I was a kid. So I got really into it too. This is a cool piece of news. 